So in task B2, over here, it says Sam wants to know the number of members who are at level three. Filter the members worksheet to show only the level three members. Okay, so we come to the members worksheet. And over here, we have to, so let's go back into, right now we are in formula view now. So we'll go back into data view. So in the formula step, I'm going to click on the show formulas button again to disable showing formulas, okay? So click on it. And then what happens is some of the columns become too small. So what I'll do is again, I'll come and click over here and then double click on one of the column widths. So automatically all the others will auto adjust it. Okay. Double click. There you go. All of them have auto adjusted. Okay. So over here, they only want me to show level three. Okay. So we can put a filter over here. We can put a filter. Let's come to the home tab. Let's come to sort and filter and let's put a filter over there. And in this filter, in this filter, we are not going to display everything. We are going to disable it and we are only going to display level three, only advanced members we will be displaying. Okay, that's what the question paper asked us to do. So we say, okay, and you can see only level three is there. The others are hidden, okay? They have not been deleted, they are hidden, okay? If you want to clear the filter, you can simply click on this and say clear filter, okay? But for now, let me just display only level three and we say, okay. Right, then the question paper goes on to say, display only the data for the member name and total cost columns, okay? So the other columns are going to be hidden, member name and the total cost. So these three columns, we are going to hide it. So I select these three columns, okay? Then I right click and I say hide, okay? So now these three columns have been hidden. So can you see only column A and column E are visible. If you ever want to unhide them, as you can see, there's a small gap between A and E. Can you see there's a gap between A and E? So you can keep the cursor in between that gap. Right click and say unhide. Again, right click and say unhide. Again, right click and say unhide. So then one by sorry, in that gap, okay? In that gap, you have to keep it and then say unhide. So then one by one, they would appear. But now for the question's sake, I'm gonna hide them. Right click, hide. Okay, there you go. Then the question paper says, save the spreadsheet as task B2, print the members worksheet showing the value. So let me first save it as task B2. So a shortcut key for save as is F12. Okay, you can use the F12 key. So FN F12, since I'm using a laptop, and I'll change this to task B2 and click on okay. Right, and then I also have to print this. So select the data, control B, and then go ahead and print it. Okay, All right. Then the question paper goes on to task B3. So here it says you to create a new Word document. You have to enter these details in the header. You have to save the document as task B3. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's right click and say new uh, Word document, which is over here. And let's call it task B3. Let's open it up. And let's go into the header. So I double click and open the header. Task B3, your name, your candidate number, and your center number. Okay. Right. So I'm going to come out of the header and footer. Then the question paper goes on to say, task B3A, Sam wants you to create a chart to display the percentage of ski run lens from the details worksheet. The chart must include a suitable title, label showing the percentage values, appropriate series name. Okay, so he wants us to create a chart to display the percentage of ski run lengths. Okay, so let's come to our Excel sheet. Let's come to the details worksheet because that is where the details are. And here also we're going to go back into normal view. We're going to switch off this formula view. Click on it and switch it off. So he wants us to draw a chart that showing the percentage of the ski runs length okay so what is the data we need we definitely need this key run type and then we also need the percentage isn't it so i'm going to hold on to the control key now see i have selected this no problem in selecting this then i press the control key control key and i select these four is it clear let me do it again so over here with the mouse i just select these uh four then hold on to the control key i'm pressing the control key and i select these four as well, because these two columns I need in my chart, okay? I need to show the ski run type and I need to show the percentage of each run, okay? Then I come now, the question paper has not told me what type of a chart to draw, isn't it? They have just said create a chart, 
Okay, so I'm going to ask the computer what is the best chart. So I'm going to come to insert and I'm going to ask the computer what is the recommended chart. And the first one looks okay. Second one looks okay. Third one also looks okay. So I'm going to go with the second one itself. Okay, I'm going to go with the second one itself. And I'm going to click on okay. And then the question paper says it should have a suitable title. So uh, shall I just simply copy this as the title? Okay, so this could be the title of my chart. Control V, you have to make it look like a title. So percentage of ski run lens. And then let's make it look like all underlined. Okay. And then do not forget, guys, you should also label the parts of your chart. So you have the x-axis, y-axis. Let's come and click plus and let's access titles. So this will be the percentage run length. Let's say percentage length of run, isn't it? Okay. And this is going to be the ski run type. Okay. Uh, appropriate series name. So appropriate series names, we have blue, red, black. So if you use a pie chart, now if we had created this using a pie chart, okay, if we had created this using a pie chart, then you should have a series name showing what is gray, what is orange, what is blue. Okay, so you'll have to come and enable that. You'll have to come and say, uh, legend, you'll have to enable it here. So you'll have to say what is blue, what is red, what is black, okay. Uh, right, so we are not going with a, a pie chart. Oh, sorry, my bad. We are not going with a pie chart. We are going with a column chart. Okay, uh, right. Uh, we also have to have labels showing the percentage values. Okay, okay, okay. So let's also enable labels, so data labels. Okay, so it shows us exactly 50%, 33%, 17%. Okay. Uh, appropriate series names that we do not have it because we are using a column chart. Save the spreadsheet as chart. Okay, so we have to save the spreadsheet as chart. So I'm going to use a shortcut key F12 again and saving it as a chart. Okay, there you go. And then the next thing to be done is copy the chart or take a screenshot of the chart. Paste the chart into document task B3. Make sure that the chart is easy to read. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste it. So come over here, Control C, come to task B3, Control V. Okay, so chart has been copied and pasted. I'll just make it slightly bigger so it's easier to read. Just to be on the safe side, this is definitely readable. Okay, there you go. Then the question paper goes on to say, Use the members worksheet to display only the data for member name, member type, and ski pass cost. Okay, so we need to have only these three columns, member name, member type, and ski pass cost. So we go back into the members worksheet. Let's unhide all these columns. I showed you, right, how to unhide. Keep the cursor in between the space where it's hidden. As you can see, between A and E. Then right-click, unhide. Right-click, unhide. Right click, unhide. Okay, so what are the columns that we need to hide now? So we only need member name, member type, ski pass, member name, member type, and ski pass cost. So equipment high and total cost, we will need to hide it. Okay, so right click, hide, right click, hide. Okay, then what do we do? Save the spreadsheet as task B3B. Okay. Uh, so we again go for F12, FN F12, and we save this as task B3, task B3, B, sorry. Save. Then the question paper goes on to say, take a screenshot of the spreadsheet, including column letters, paste a screenshot in document task B3, do not print at this stage, easy stuff. So I'm just going to take a screenshot of this. Okay, so in my screenshot, the column headings will be visible, the row headings will be visible. I have to come and paste it over here. So control V, that's also done. Then the question paper goes on and on. It says, task B3, answer these questions in task B3. Sam has a worksheet showing the star ratings of the hotels the members will be staying in. Okay, so these are another part. 
Sam has a worksheet showing the star ratings of the hotels the members will be staying in. The function equal count if B3 to B14 for B7 has been used in cell B15. So in B15, this formula has been used. Describe how this function works with this data. So count if, okay, so the name itself tells you count if. Then what is the range? Count from where to where? Count from B3 to B14. So from here to here, it's going to count. It's going to count looking for what? It's going to count looking for what? It's going to look for the whatever is in B7. So what is in B7? In B7, we have the value 4. So it's going to count from B3 to B14, looking for the cells, looking for how many cells has the, has the value 4 in it. Is it clear? Let me go through my let me go through again. This formula has been entered in the B15 cell. Okay. So what does this formula mean? This formula is saying count if from B3 to B14. From B3 to B14, it should count. Okay. Looking for what? Looking for what? Looking for the value in B7. Okay. So what is the value in B7? In B7, we have the value 4. So it's going to count from B3 to B14. It's going to count how many cells have the value 4 in it and it's going to give a return. It's going to tell how many cells from B3 to B14 have the value 4 in it. Okay. Right. Uh, describe how this function works. So let's put it down. If we can say, what's the question number? Let's put 1. The count if function will count the number of cells that have the value 4 from the range B3 to B14. Okay. So basically, this is what the count if function will be doing. Okay. It's counting from B3 to B14, looking for the value that B7 has, which is 4. So it's going to count how many cells have the value 4 in it. Okay. Right. The next question says, state the feature labeled A. So label A is what we call a named range. Okay. So you can select a range of cells in your Excel sheet and you can give it a name. So next time when you type that name over here, that range would be selected. I'll just give you a quick example. So for example, these cells I can select and I can give it a name. So I can right click and say define name and I can give it a name as, for example, IT lab. Okay. Now, when I come over here and type IT lab, okay, I press enter, do you see that range gets selected? That's what we call a named range. Okay, so let's put an answer over here. That's known as a named range, save task B3, print task B3. Okay, so we save it and then we print it. Okay, right, moving on to our final part. This long question, task B4. Uh, task B4 is to do with, uh, so we have come to the end of, uh, so we are done with Excel, isn't it? We are done with Excel. Yeah, now we move on to word processing. So task B4 is to do with word processing. Okay, so we'll uh, continue this final activity in our next video. Okay, so guys, see you in the next video.